Hello friends, welcome to another episode of Community Connections right here on charlottenow.tv. I wanna thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Sam Otero, your host and producer and founder of this budding network. Today, I'm so excited because I have an opportunity to speak with a new friend of mine about something that is near and dear to my heart, original music and what is happening in the Charlotte music scene. More than that, I don't have to wear my hair up. I can let my hair down today and actually show the rock and roll side of myself, which I love. Feels good to let loose a little bit and be able to be myself on this network. We hope that you're enjoying charlottenow.tv and we encourage you to go on over to our website, get involved with what it is that we're doing. So today we are going to be speaking with a new friend of mine. He is a musician, longtime musician, who uh, transplanted himself from the Big Apple into the city of Charlotte about 16 years ago. Built a career based on playing in a variety of bands and started a music studio, which has uh, grown uh, considerably over the years to uh, almost 200 students on a regular basis teaching a variety of different instruments right in his studio in uh, the town of Matthews, right outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, most recently he began uh, taking an interest in seeing what he can do to help promote local live original music. Musicians that are out there slugging away, writing their own stuff, And Mike came to understand that there wasn't a venue that would give them the professional setup and the presentation that they needed and the space that they needed to really show their stuff. So he went about uh, finding a venue and connected with one right in Mint Hill called Stooges. And uh, together with him and the owner of that club, they went and set up a North Carolina original music showcase every Tuesday night. And here to tell us about it and to talk with us about his career and the importance of diversifying one's income and supporting the local arts scene and networking and all those fun things, building community, which is what this is all about. This show, Community Connections, right here on charlottenow.tv. Please welcome my new friend, Mr. Mike Grassi. Welcome to the show, sir. Hey, thanks for having me, Sam. And uh, we'll talk about a little bit what I've done and what's going on in the future. Uh, Let me know what you want to know first. Yeah, well, you know, first things first, we want to set this up and let people know what we're going to be talking about. We, we, the, The point of this show is to connect people in the community with others in the community that are doing good works for the benefit of those in the community, hence community connections, right? So we want our audience to get to know Mike. We want them to understand what's driving you, what is uh, 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 pushing you to push live local original music. That is so important to the the pulse and the heartbeat of a city. Um, and then, you know, we want people to, to know how they can get in touch with you and get involved if they are so inclined. So why don't we just start the conversation with telling us about Mike Grassi and what brought you to Charlotte, sir? Okay. So I, I've been here about 16 years. I live in Matthews and um, it, uh, we, it's the only spot I've ever lived in Charlotte happy at Matthews. Um, I came in here as a musician from New York, Long Island. And um, the scene there, uh, the musician scene there, I've always been a music teacher, a private music teacher. I've always been a drum teacher, drum instructor. But I, I have a degree in you know, for music, fine arts and all that from Long Island. Anyway, I moved here. I was a working musician in New York on Long Island, but I played all over. Um, yeah, I thought it was time back then to, to, to find a new outlet. I had two young kids. And, and my wife and we, we wanted to to find um I wanted to find a different uh, landscape for myself and my family to grow up that was uh, a little bit more affordable affordable for my kids. Really, it was more about my kids than me. Um, so we sold our house, came here, been in Matthews, and in, in the beginning, I didn't have a job. I had a home. I had a little bit of money behind me. And I'm always transparent about everything sure. in my life, um, but not you know not. Not a whole lot where I had to figure it out. So I had to, I had to basically hustle it. Um, I got lucky back 
uh, about 16 years ago. I, I auditioned for the Charlotte Bobcats, who are now the Charlotte Hornets. Um, and I was on their drum line. I have videos out there on YouTube for about five years. Um, I just got lucky. I came. I didn't know anybody. There was an ad on Craigslist about looking for uh, to add some drummers to there. To it. It's not. Re- it was really a, a drum show, let's say, more than like a drum line, you see. Um, so uh, I auditioned. Um, didn't think much of it. My wife kind of got me, said, you, you can do this. I said, I'm a little out of practice. I was moving my family. She said, just go. I had a 102 championship. I'll never, never forget. Went there, forgot about two weeks later, they called me. They said, we'd like to have you on the team, come down to this meeting. And then that was uh, sort of a launch. I was able to push my teaching because uh, I was now in, on half times and after the game, there would be thousands of people, uh, 2,000 people surrounding us, kids. And we were doing our thing, so I was able to, to give my cards out for lessons and stuff and build up my, my cheap thing. And that's how, it, that's how it started. I didn't know any musicians. I didn't know anybody. Um, I, just, again, I had no job, nothing. I had to figure it out. So, <laughs> Mike, um, you're, you're kind of describing me here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, have two, you know, I have a one- and a two-year-old, and my wife wasn't working um, at the time because wow. we had always worked on our in New York. So. It was, you know, it was, um, I'm that type of guy. A lot of people would not try that. Um, I was, you know, at the time I was younger, 15 years younger, 16 years younger. Yeah. But I, I, you know, knowing my personality, um, I, I, you know, when you're back against the wall, you figure it out, man, you know. That's a big leap of faith, right? Yeah, it is. Um, so uh, people who knew me knew Okay, if anybody could do it, it'd be Mike. Um, and of course, my wife uh, was fully behind me. And um, and and you know, I just I started doing anything, man. I was doing that. I was giving lessons. Doing. I started gigging. I got lucky. Somebody on the on the team was in a popular band that then uh, they're not together anymore. He needed. He was doing something else musically. He needed a drummer for stuff. I did, you know I I sub for him. He liked it. I ended up actually doing a lot of their gigs. He was doing, at the time, doing something else musically. So I, I, I was getting my name out there and starting to do gigs. My lessons started to build up. It was a slow churn in the beginning, but I lived conservative. You know, I, I was conservative in my living. So, uh, and I started doing odds and end jobs and, and stuff like that. So you, you just do what you can do to get to your main goal, which mm. is where I am now, um, which is owning my own music, music school. Yeah. You know, I have my own band. I have two bands that are popular. I do the open mic. I do the original music. But I'm, you know, it, it's just, it's a step, but you got to keep at it. And, and there's always those downfalls, those pitfalls. You have to pick yourself up. We all have them. Nobody has an easy life. Anybody tells you to have an easy life, they're lying. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Um, well, I, I, I appreciate so. what you're doing, man. And I, and I, and I really, yeah. I, I know how busy you are and I really value that you're taking the time yeah, no um, to do this and getting me up at the, the crack of dawn and making me drink gallons <laughs> of good Java to get going. This, this is, this is kind of early for me. So uh, I, I'm well, a bit uh, of a night out. You know, uh, Sam had asked me, so I'll see you tomorrow night. I said, no, that's tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I double checked. I'm like, wait a minute. Did he say am? I got to be. So that, now this shows dedication, people. But, you know, one of the things that I do like about this is I'm, I'm excited because I, I haven't really talked about this whole lot myself, but I'm, I'm a musician myself. And and, and, and it, you're describing your story. It's really interesting because it's kind of the story of my wife and I uh, kind of sort of. But we took that big leap of, leap of faith as well. And we left. I, I'm a retired. I taught digital music media arts for 13 years and retired from teaching and started my own production company, video production company. And music's kind of been in the, on the back burner for me for a long time, but I'm still very passionate about it. And I'm, you know, I'm picking my guitar back up and, and singing again. I'm, I'm looking to get back out into the scene. And that's one of the things that really attracted me to Charlotte was it was like, this is a, I, I could sink my teeth into this scene, I think, and, and, and get out there and make something happen. So it starts today with my very first episode focusing on the live local scene here in Charlotte and I get to let my hair down and put one of my cool gig shirts on. So thanks, Mike. Yeah, yeah. It's all about rock and roll. Yeah. That's it, baby. It's all about the rock and roll. You know it. That is awesome. Well, let's talk. Okay. Let's talk about the Charlotte scene. You know, it's one thing 
to be, I mean, I, as uh, many musicians are, they are entrepreneurs, right? And clearly you are, you've got your business, you're going out there. Like you said, you're showing the hustle, quality that it takes to make it happen, quality in your work, integrity, right? What else does it take to make a living as an original artist in a mid-sized city such as Charlotte? Well, here's what's funny. I, I'm actually a cover band guy. Um, so I have a, I, I don't know how much you know about scene yourself, but, but it's fine. I do a 80s band called Kids in America, which is a very popular, very popular tribute band in basically the region. We travel and I do a Chicago tribute band, a tribute to Chicago, the band um, that travels really around the country. Um, and then I, that band also does an ARIO, uh, the Chicago one also does ARIO Speedway as a tribute. So I'm actually, the funny thing is I'm actually a cover guy. I haven't played original music. I do recordings for original people when they need drum tracks, but I don't, um, I don't actually play original music. But about, um, uh, about a year ago, I was doing a, a long story short, I open mic on Mondays. The owner at, is at Stooges in Mint Hill which is a popular music venue around here. He said to me, well, well Mondays look pretty good. Um, what, what do you got on Tuesdays? I said, you know, man, there's no original music scene for these all these original bands that I know there's a lot of good ones. I know of them. They just have nowhere to play. So he, he uh, that was Mark, the owner. He said, you know what, let's, let's give it a shot. I'll give it three months. So here we are about a half year later and it's going well. So um, it's funny because I don't, I'm actually probably, I'm not anti uh, original. I just don't. I'm not involved with originals, but I know it's nice to see all these younger bands and, and older guys too come out and play their songs. And I, I, I man, every time I'm sitting there, and I'm blown away by the talent that a lot of people don't just don't even know about because they don't have anywhere to play. So we're giving them that platform. So every Tuesday night we do it as students. If you want to play original music night, I'm the one that does the promoting and the booking. Contact me at Mike Grassi Music LLC at gmail.com. I'm curious, what was the impetus? What was it that made you pivot to that? Was it the fact that you're an instructor and you saw a lot of your 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 own students that had that original spark and fire in them and were writing good songs and you're sitting there going, there's no place for them to showcase? What was it that that sparked this? To make this happen, so um, it, I always knew in the back of my mind that, and and, it's, and, it, and, it, and I do have students. I don't teach as much because the school it has about two hundred now, and it's all different instruments, and I hire teachers and all that. But in teaching, when I taught more, um, I would basically run the school, which keeps me busy as heck. But when, um, <clears throat> when I was teaching, you know, most younger artists when they start out. They don't really they'll do covers, but you know, a lot of them really get together the right music. And that's, you know, that's the the heartbeat, I think, of 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 it all. And um, and they would, you know, they would say, Man, we jam, we'd have nowhere to play. And I hear I heard it so much. There's only one other club on the other side of town that does it, original music. It's a smaller place. But Stooges has a nice stage. We have lighting, we have, you know, we supply a drum set and PA system. It's a real cool venue. Um, so, you know, I just felt that it was really needed because, and, and it's really the original scene, in my opinion, all around the country has really, um, is coming less and less for people to play places for, uh, people to pay to bands to play at. So I already knew about that. So I just thought it'd be a great, a great thing to do. And how has the response? Um, how has the response been from our community? Are people coming out to see I live music? Are you finding that they're show, or, or original music? I should say. Or are you finding that they're showing up and wanting the bands to play their favorite their favorite tunes that they recognize? Are they, they generally in support of uh, these original artists? So um, it, it's we do it on Tuesdays there and. The people who come out, we have a pretty good crowd. Now, every band has a little different following. Sometimes it's really crowded. Other nights, it's halfway crowded. Generally, we have a pretty good crowd. Um, and, and a lot of it has to do with the band. So some bands have, have a good following. But we also have people who come out weekly just to support it and who are music. Most of the time, they're musicians or fan of music. And they have nothing to do on a weeknight. And they come out to hear all these bands play 
Um, but no, they don't look for covers because it's um, it's billed as a original music night only. Now that club, Stooges, does covers on Fridays and Saturdays. They do regular cover bands. But on Tuesdays, when you go there, everybody knows it's original music. And there are sometimes a band will say to me, hey, can I play a cover? Sure. But the, you know, 95% of it's original music. So no, nobody looks for it and they all, they all, um, they're all in tune and listening. And, and really it's funny to see, um, people after, you know, the, a band will play or even join the performance. Really, you can see them cheering and clapping because, you know, every once in a while a band is really, really good mm. and you can't help but watch yourself and say, man, these guys are great. Right. Absolutely. And it, it, what, what genres have been showing up? Has it mainly been rock bands? Um, it, is there well, uh, is there I, I something more that you'd like to see and encourage folks as far as stylistically what they're bringing to the table? It's funny, um, most of the time, it's, it's generally, uh, it could be rock. Um, usually it's rock, funk, popish type of stuff. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing... Um, a little, uh, sometimes it's like we had younger bands. They came out it was more on the metal side, which was fine too. I wouldn't mind seeing. We actually never had a country band come out. I'm, and I mean, I don't even really. I know country music. I'm not going to say I'm a huge fan of it. I don't hate it, but um, I, I haven't had any really country. And I know they're around, so it'd be nice to see some country artists come out. Um, it's funny the way we do it is the way I, we structure it. And I I was part of this is. We do three acts. So usually the first one, you don't need a full band. If you're a solo artist and you have your own songs, we have usually a guitar or a keyboard is, will come and um, usually be the first. They do a half hour, take a 15 minute break. Usually the second act is a duo or a trio, can be also be a solo act, hmm. and they do a half hour of music, take a 15 minute break. And then the, the headliner is usually a full band, four piece and up, or more of electric style. And they, you know, uh, that could be any any style. But most of the styles we see are generally rock based, um, but uh, rock pop. I'll say mm -hmm. that, that's fabulous. And the crowds, have, the, the crowds have been good. I mean, obviously, the club owner took uh, took a risk, right? Um, he did. He did. Um, I he mean, did. It, it, it costs money. You know, you know, you might say somebody might say, "Well, what, what risk? He's probably dead on a Tuesday night anyway." But the fact is, he's got to pay staff. He's got to pay all the electricity to to run this joint to help you promote it, right? So, uh, shout out to the person that is uh, making this commitment and providing this venue and took this risk to promote live original art and i think it's fabulous so uh, tell us a little bit about the people that you're working with up there at stooges so um on uh, that's on tuesday that's the owner is mark etheridge and he's a uh, a good guy he's very uh, out there you, you can get in touch with him he's not you know somebody who's kind of hides and he, he, sometimes you get these owners of places like this they you can't can't get in touch with him he's always out there um he i gotta say he's uh he backed it and, and then it does cost money. I mean, obviously, he's got me. He's got the sound guy. Um, he's got, you know, he's bringing the sound system. He's got a light guy. He's got the cook. He's got a few, somebody working on the floor, somebody behind the bar. So that's exactly right. We worked it out where, where we're all able to, you know, um, not work for free, but able to make it where his costs aren't so high, where if you have a slower night, it's not killing him. So he, he understands that. Um, so, but when he has a good night, he, he does better. So, so it all works out. Um, I got to say, it, it's a bit like last week. It was, it, you, if you would have walked in there around 830 at night, you would have thought it was a Saturday night. It, it, it was that busy. Hopping. Uh, that's cool. You yeah. know, that's one of the things that attracted me to Charlotte. Uh, my wife and I came down and spent a week down here. We've been looking to move from the madhouse that is uh, the DC region for, for a while. And uh, we weren't sure where to go. So, you know, we heard about Charlotte. We checked it out, checked out the YouTube videos and all the realtors that were telling us the 10 reasons why you should move to Charlotte, the 10 reasons why you shouldn't move to Charlotte, right? And we thought, we got to get down there and see it for ourselves. And man, we fell in love with it instantly. This city that everybody is so cool. We, it's such a laid back vibe and art everywhere i was so we're both so excited about this and now that we're here and getting to know people and making friends and 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 I, you know i got my own endeavor going here it, it's just it, doors just keep opening and i see such opportunity for the creative 
to really flourish in this city. Would you not agree? I think so. Uh, how long you been here, Sam? Uh, three months, sir. I mean, so you, I mean, you are, are, you're a toddler. I mean, you know, you're a newborn. So it's like, there's so much opportunity. I can tell you that gig wise, show wise, I played more here um, than I never have back in New York. And people say to me, oh, you came from New York. You know, it's really not you know, thinking that there's all these great gigs and it really wasn't that way. Um, and I came from Long Island, but I work here. And I, if I wanted to work musically six nights a week, I could if I really wanted to. Um, I mean, I have my school of music and stuff, and I do the studios, and, and I play. I generally play three uh, anywhere four to, let's say, uh, excuse me, two to five times a week, especially spring, summer, and fall. Um, but in the winter, it still slows down to one or two a week, which is fine. Um, but I run the school, but there's a lot of opportunity, man. Uh, you know, up in Noda, there's a, is a big district now. It's becoming kind of like the village, you know, the, the, a mini uh, village of New York, of Manhattan. They're going you know, to have the village where it's become real RC. The restaurants everywhere. Um, music is, is very big here. I noticed um, even with the school is, is, is jamming. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much maxed out. Yeah. Uh, tell us, tell us about that. You were, you, how many students do you have? That's crazy. Um, it's about, it, it's about almost touching 200 and, and we can't really do any more. Um, we have wow. a few. Openings. Yeah. Um, and it's just grown. It's a uh, music. I, I, I find here that people, even the younger people, though, the parents get their kids a little bit more involved in music. You know, obviously sports in three years has you know, conquered that, but they, they do respect the arts here, and, and you know, you, I have plenty of families where the dad's coming in with the son, dad's jumping in the guitar while the son's learning drums, you know. See it a lot. We have a lot of families, two, three, we even have a family of four. So um, it's definitely more um, art-based here, I think, as far as the, the, the people wanting to learn music. Um, is, and, and it's not just my school. All the schools are pretty busy. So. Mm -hmm. Um, there's just there's just a lot of opportunity. If you like, I said if I wanted to play a small drum set or play percussion, sit on a djembe uh, and play and uh, bongos and all that stuff, I could. On, but I, I don't because um, you know having a family and stuff, and I like try yeah. to be around at night and, and having my studio, um, I'm, I'm good. But man, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff, and it's really grown. Charlotte, you know, it, 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 when I first moved here, it was known as sort of a boring city. Um, and But that is all changed. If you go uptown in the city, it is all changed up there. It's jamming up there. I don't even go up there that much. Um, but you're right. It, there's a lot of opportunity for a guy like you and me. That's awesome. That is awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm honored that you're taking the time to talk with me. I, I really am. I, I appreciate what you're doing from an entrepreneurial standpoint and, and give it back to the community too. I mean, I mean, let's face it, you know, we all need to make a living, you know, and it, I think it's wonderful and it's an inspirational story to have found somebody that has found a way and to, to make a living making music that I think that is incredible, but you, let's face it, you can make a, money and make a living making music without having to uh, dedicate yourself to helping others in making their music. So I think it's very honorable what you're doing, that you're right. that you're giving so much of your life and your experiences back to uh, helping teach and inspire others to do and walk the walk that they feel called to walk. I think that is incredible. And then to turn around and to promote original music here and to dedicate your time to, to, to help others build their dream, man. I think that's great. And really Mike, what you're saying, not, not to puff you up here, but yeah. you're, you're, you're one of many examples of what makes Charlotte and cities like Charlotte, such an awesome place to live and do business because you're not in it just for the money. You're in it for the connectivity. You're in it for your brothers and sisters in the community to help make this place a better place to live. That's what this show is all about. And I'm honored that you're joining us today, sharing your story. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know, you hit upon something that I think um, 
and I got it. I'm going to sound like I'm bash, bashing New York and I'm a, I'm a New Yorker inside. So, but th- th- that community wasn't there. It was more, um, what can I get out of something for myself? You know, what, why is this guy need me? Is this guy bothering me? That, that type of attitude here, which I never was a fan of, obviously. That's one of the reasons why I moved, but here it's more, um, more community based people helping each other. Not, every, not everything's about the money. Um, and, and, it, and, and that, you know, and that's what I'm about, just the way I am. So if I fit great here in Charlotte because I'm able to get people, like you said, seeing, learning. Uh, I'm, I do a lot of shows myself and some of the shows are real big around the country. All that is all you can make a living at doing music um, if you're if you stick with it and, and work with learn how to work with people different personalities and be able to adjust with people. You can make a living if you're flexible. Uh, I, if I just say I only play rock music, I'm a drummer, I'm only going to play rock music in an original band, and that's all I'm going to do. Not saying don't do that, but you know, if you're able to learn how to study and teach and do other stuff, play cover, cover music, and get really involved, you can make a living. And Because you know, people have it, musicians, oh, yeah, well, he's got no money, he's living in a you know, flat out somewhere. And you know, could barely put food on the table. That's not necessarily the case for a lot of for a lot of mu- working musicians who, you know, who really work this, who work the the community with it. Absolutely, and it, it's all about that. So much of the arts community works on referrals and lifting one another up and yeah. helping one another. You know, uh, the whole uh, analogy of crabs in the bucket. You know, that just doesn't work. Um, in the big picture, you know, one, one crab's trying to crawl out of the bucket and the other ones are pulling them down. Right. And tr- in their exactly. desperation to get out too. Um, and we see that a lot in, in, in various industries and in business in general. So it does my heart good to meet somebody like you that's an entrepreneur. And, and I think it's important too the, uh, you know, the, the, the message here of diversifying one's income. Right. I, I don't care what if you're if you're an independent video producer like me or an, or a, uh, an educator or a musician or a business person. It, it's it's very important to set up your life in such a way that you have different income streams. So you're not putting all of your eggs in one basket. That's very important. You know, I think it also uh, it keeps uh, it keeps you fresh. You know, you're always uh, keeping an eye out for for different ways of approaching life and approaching business and right. hence approaching and people, new- too. There's always a you know a new mountain to climb, and and you hit you know you hit upon you hit upon something. Um, having multiple income streams, I've always done that I, for some reason. I've always because you see so many times people will be like, it could be any career, they lose a job, something happens, they get sick, whatever it is, and all of a sudden their income stops, and that's obviously a problem. I've always been one to do multiple things, even sometimes up to three or more. But mm-hmm. at least two. So if something went sour for whatever reason it was, I wasn't completely down. Right. You know? Well, you find that a lot of mo- a lot of musicians do that. Um, it, but what's cool and going back to what this show is all about, Charlotte, the the fact that this city uh, and the economy of this city and the mindset and the spirit of this city supports that mindset and the the opportunities here. So you know what? Join us. Join us right here on charlottenow.tv. My hope and my goal here is somebody gets inspired. Listen, I didn't start Charlotte Now with the intention of being the Sam Otero show, although I love this and I could do this every day and I plan on doing it every day. I want to build a network here. So Mike, what are your, what are your thoughts on what how we could use this platform to continue to promote the arts and music scene here? I would love to see somebody come to me and say, hey, Sam, why don't you produce? I'll take over an episode and 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 let's 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 start an original music showcase TV show on Charlotte. Now, I would love to produce that for somebody else as the host. So that that's kind of one of the things I talked about quickly on my Facebook post this morning is, you know, I think we can give an outlet to some of these original bands. And, and, you know, I'll work with you because I know you're newer here. So um, I'm here to help you, obviously. And and what I think what you're doing is great. I mean, it's it, you have a great setup. It, it doesn't, you know, you can tell us you're really into your editing video. You, you know what you're doing. And I can tell, I can tell by just looking at your site. Um, so we can, you know, we can 
have an outlet for it before it's, you know, let's talk about original music to get them out there heard maybe even seen video wise a, a, a short 20 minute set or a half hour or, you know whatever it is or even three songs of them performing because you know just so i'm so the audience knows uh, your website actually covers everything it's not just music but you you're your website is flexible. It does all, you cover all, everything that has to do with Charlotte, which I love. With obviously me, I'm a music guy, so we're going to f- focus more on the music part of it. But yeah, I think it'd be great if we, if we can get something going where we can get, you know, um, original artists to, to, do, to do a performance, you know, like a morning show thing or something like well, that. Well, let, let's call it Charlotte Sessions. I love it. There you go. There you right. go. All right. So we'll do, we, we're all read up. The, the, the Ferrari has been built and I'm willing to give you the keys. Jump on in. If you're interested in co-hosting with me or taking it on yourself, um, it'd be great. I, I also do have, I've got a pretty robust uh, a home studio here. Um, but uh, I also have a mobile studio, so I, I can do everything that you're seeing here live. So if anybody wants nice. to do, I would love to talk with you, Mike, about, uh, in the future, doing a, a, a music, uh, showcase and live broadcasting this stuff out to the world. I would love to work with you on that. Um, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Tell us what, what you got coming up here at Stooges with your live music showcase. Well, so there's there's uh there's a few bands you know that come I ha- we have back we have back most of the artists because we do three a week but for the future like I said if you want to get in touch with me on doing original music night playing there just hit me up as uh, Mike Grassy Music LLC at Gmail dot com and and I'll you know send over some links of what you do your Facebook page some some bands have websites some don't have much they have just some audio that's all fine whatever you got send over um and then you know we can we can, i can get you a platform to play on you just need to have for now 30 minutes of music and as far as me and you go we can talk about that too and uh, giving them you know people people uh these bands and you don't have to be a full band you could be a solo artist mm-hmm. there's a lot of people out there who do have write great music that we are blown away by some people come up and they're just with a keyboard a female singer Wow, I didn't, you know, I didn't realize how good this person was. So these people need to be seen. Awesome. That's great. Mike Grassi, thank you so much for what you're doing for our community and, and for taking the time to help this new media platform flourish. And I, I wanted to tell you too, it did my heart really good. Um, it, it's been interesting because sometimes, you know, uh, when you're in a field like this and you pour your heart into what it is that you do and, and, you know, sometimes f- I'll, I'll do features on people and push their stuff out there and we don't even see them sharing the videos after we did it. And, uh, you know, uh, I get people are busy, but you know, sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. That's part of the game, I suppose. You know, if you want but to, what was cool think. was I woke up this morning and saw you actually paying it forward and telling people that you were coming on the show. Oh, absolutely. That meant the world to me, man. Thank you. Oh man. I mean, and don't worry about it. That will continue. Um, you know, I always say, what go, you know, for something to happen, you have to make it happen. If you don't, if you if you don't put anything in motion, you know, it, it always gets me like crazy when somebody says, "I can't get this." Well, what have you done to do it? You have to, you have to do it yourself. You know, relying on other people, whatever. So, yeah, you know, let, we'll we'll talk and we'll we'll. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I don't mind uh, help getting this growing. I know it's a new a new venture for you, but I think it's great. I know, like I said, I can see your professionalism in what you're doing. And so I, I would love to be a part of that. And thanks for having me. I'm honored to be here. My, my, my honor and pleasure as well. All right, Mike Grazzi, um, we'll put your website up and let people know where to find you and check the show description for links below. And if you are an original band that would like to take part in the North Carolina, uh, uh original music showcase happening. That's it every week at Stooges right here in the beautiful Queen City. Then get hold of Mike and he'll hook you up. Thank you so much again, sir. We'll talk to you real soon. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. And there you have it. Mike Grassi doing amazing things to promote original music right here in the beautiful city of Charlotte, North Carolina. I am your host and producer for charlottenow.tv. And I meant what I said. If you're interested in joining the team here and having your own show and maybe helping launch an entertainment-centric show on the budding Charlotte 
charlottenow.tv network, then please hit me up. You can go to my website at charlottenow.tv and uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Send us an email and or give me a call. I'd love to meet with you and find out what it is that you can lend to this effort. My name is Sam Atero coming to you from my home studios in beautiful Charlotte, North Carolina. There's another episode of Community Connections in the digital bag, as they say. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. Please, if you are enjoying this content and wish to help charlottenow.tv grow, you can click the support button on our page and toss us a digital tip. We'd appreciate that as we do have expenses and keeping this thing going to serve our community. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time around. Peace.